Hi, Micha. Warm welcome in our tech talk. It's your tech talk. It's your playlist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Axel. Welcome here <laughs> in yeah. your tech talk. <laughs> ah, we talk today about Rust, the revolution of Rust. And why is Rust a revolution? Yeah. We have to start in simple terms as always. I think if people don't know what Rust actually is, Rust is a programming language and it is a programming language that is, so it's a general purpose programming language. And the revolution is, let's say it's on the technical side, obviously, because other programming languages that are similar to Rust, like C, C++, they are not completely memory safe. So basically what 70% of all the bugs are related to memory safety and memory safety bugs that could lead to something like uninitialized variables, memory that is not freed in at runtime of the program and another program or the program can still read memory from it. And basically the program could eventually run out of memory. So there are memory leaks and memory leaks is basically when acquired by the program or allocated by the program and it's not freed accordingly. If this happens, this is some security vulnerability and this is actually a defect in the program and should be fixed because it can lead also to more severe issues. Like if you know about the heartbleed bug, for instance, in OpenSSL, that was a couple of years ago where potentially some private information could be leaked because of these kind of bugs. And this memory safety often boils down to something that is called the billion dollar problem. Have you heard of the billion dollar mistake? No. What's the billion dollar mistake in the software industry here? Yeah. That's the called null pointer reference. And a null pointer reference is basically an object that you can point to is actually null. And it involves a special value that is called null or undefined. And this undefined object still represents an object, but actually internally it's null. So imagine you have a box and you, you assume that something is inside the box, but actually there's nothing inside it, but you expect something is inside the box. And when you open the box, in terms of programming languages, this would be undefined behavior and your program might crash. It sounds simple. It's actually also quite simple, but it all sounds, let's say, harmless. But in the end, it's a billion dollar mistake because every program dealing with languages like C or C++ can have this kind of mistake. And as you know, banks are using it, the medical industry is using it, everyone in the big software industry is using these kind of languages. And then, of course, a billion dollars come easily together, right? So there is a way to solve the problem. It's called garbage collection. So basically where you have some kind of memory tracker and this automatically frees the memory when you don't need it anymore. Problem is this costs performance. Apparently you can't have both. Either you have a very well-performing program that uses garbage collection, or you have a very performant problem that has these memory safety issues, right? So you have basically two options here. Rust is actually the third option. So you combine both advantages. So you have memory safety and you don't need the garbage collector. And that's mind you don't have the performance penalty that the garbage collector involves. So that's actually the revolution because you can write now fast programs and you can be sure when you run these programs that they are memory safe. And I said earlier that 70% of the bugs are memory safety issues. So if you just use Rust or if you switch your existing code to Rust, you will get rid of these 70% of the bugs almost for free. So almost by, okay, by doing coding in Rust, but that's the issue, yeah. Data security is the one of the most important topics for the next years. Is there no strategy in the area of C++ and C? Yeah, that's a good, good question. And C, I think not, because I think the C programmers are also adopting Rust, even if the C programmers compared to the C++ programmers were seen as quite conservative what adoption of programming languages is over the year. But in December 22, the Linux kernel decided to accept Rust code as an alternative to C and assembly. 
So that is basically the C community will switch to Rust, I think, one step, one by one. And the C++ community is a bit out of ideas how to go forward here because they were preaching over the years, okay, we have guidelines and there's lots of resources how to show how to write memory safe C++ code. But the problem is still that all the resources are there and it's also the way to code C++. The problem is that not everyone is doing it. People have to learn, you need training and the language itself still allows to write memory unsafe code even with all the misra guidelines everything that is out there it still happens and apparently over the years the problem did not go away so and, and that's why rust become a really serious alternative okay yeah so, but those are the two main topics, cybersecurity security on one mm -hmm. side and the performance. Another one is dependency management. So basically when you write software, you put your code in different modules and each module fulfills a certain purpose. And usually these modules are dependent on each other, right? And what Rust makes is easier. This whole dependency management with Rust is a lot easier because you have something like the semantic versioning where the version numbers have an actual meaning and you have something like cargo that is a tool that is super useful for dependency management because it makes things so much easier if you compare it to the c++ world with cmake and how dependency management is handled there if you compare it to what cargo does there are some c++ efforts to have something like this in C++. It's called, for instance, VS Package or there's Conan. But because it's not as tied to the language as it is in Rust, and that's why it makes things so much easier and so much more convenient for the developer to track the dependencies, to add a new dependency to the program, uh, to publish your own modules. And this is way, way better solved in Rust. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Fine. So we miss a little bit the audience, the questions of the audience. Yes, exactly. So we have an email address set up hey. uh, that is called techtalk at winkelmann.site. The email address will be in the comments. We are very happy if you could write us an email about a topic you think we should talk about and which should get more public traction. Yeah. And we are also happy if the audience also subscribes our tech talk. Yes. That would be nice. Okay, then thank you very much. See you soon again or next week and waiting on your questions. Bye. Bye-bye.